Hey, I've been on some discussion boards talking about uh, coronal mass ejections as well as, uh, you know, nuclear type uh, events that could happen from nuclear bombs. Um, but let's, let's focus on uh, CMEs initially, uh, coronal mass ejections. Um, these have been happening quite frequently, but uh, there's different magnitude, just like there are earthquakes and you know hurricanes that kind of thing and so they they uh, actually have categorized CMEs as uh, A, B, C, M and X. The last major uh, X flare that we had um, was a Carrington well-known event that was you know pretty well documented in 1859. Uh, that was around September 1st and 2nd and they're estimating that was greater than an X10. Now, we've had some other um, CMEs that are pretty well known too. There was one in March 1989 where Canada got hit and they lost power. Um, in 2012, we had an X class that just missed Earth. So it, everything has to be lined up just right or wrong in this case for the Earth to be impacted. I've seen a scholarly article where they uh, tried to do some estimates based on probabilities and uh, they came up with uh, about a 12 percent per decade probability chance of us getting a Carrington type event but that works out to 2.6 times per century every hundred years we should have uh, you know an X class type event that could hit the earth now it takes about uh, two days to 18 hours, depending on the speed of the CME before it hits the earth. So maybe the government will tell us, maybe they won't. You'll have some time to prepare. But if we go back and look at what happened with the Carrington event, you know, we had telegraphs that, uh, wires that caught fire, even telegraph offices caught fire. In some cases, you know, they had disconnected the batteries to the telegraphs and they were able to operate even without you know power because the CME was providing the power for the telegraphs. But just keep in mind, you know, with our interconnected world we have today, if we had a Carrington event today, uh, we would probably lose a lot of our houses depending on where we were when this thing happened, if we were in the direct line. Um, so that's the worst case. Um, I don't know if there's any way to protect that except for, you know, isolating yourself from power. In our case, I mean, the easiest thing to do is pull the meter, but there's still a gap there that could arc. So you'd have to put some Teflon or something and uh, completely try to isolate to keep it from arcing. Um, and again, that's if we get some notification. There are signs that you would know that something's coming. You would see, you know, like the Northern Lights, maybe in the South, you would see, you know, in Carrington, they... Uh, we're able to read the newspaper at nighttime because the uh, uh, aurora borealis was so bright. And so that's just a, an indicator. But by that time, we've, we've already been impacted and the damage has probably already been done. Um, so it looks like, you know, we get these, uh, we'll say, sub X class that happen pretty frequently. You hear about satellites being shut down and affected, but, you know, when we put some up in space, the satellites have uh, radiation protection and they can actually, you know, turn things off. And again, they'll survive at a higher, much higher rate. Now, as far as sensitivity to things, you know, if we don't get an X class, you don't have to worry about maybe your cars being affected. Um, if the thing's off, it's going to have much higher survivability than it's actually operating. Um, Electronics wise, if you have vacuum tubes, for instance, um, so some of the old ham receivers, they're a thousand times less sensitive to not only, you know, nuclear events, but, um, you know, CME. Um, when you go down to remember the old days, at least I do, they had transistorized radios. So you had discrete transistors in there. They're actually also less sensitive than microcircuits. Microcircuits are the most sensitive. But if you get remove power and we don't have like an X class type flare, um, then you'll have the highest level of survivability. They, things will survive at a much higher 
uh, dose rate if they're non-powered, whether it's a microcircuit, transistorized, or even the uh, you know ham receiver. Now, like a ham receiver, it's connected to an antenna, which could induce a large pulse. So, you know, normally if you're not using your ham receiver, the best thing to do is disconnect the antenna and take the end and stick it into like a glass mason jar or something, which gives a huge isolation and you're not going to be frying your receiver, which is the most sensitive part, receiver circuitry that is. So anyways, um, things to consider just... Um, there are certain things that, uh, you know, if we had a Carrington, we're, we're probably pretty well screwed. Power is going to be out for, you know, maybe a decade because some of these transformers, they're just not sitting on a shelf and it'll take a long time to build them up. And if nobody has power, how are you going to build it? Um, it's going to take, it's going to be quite an interesting thing. Um, so one thing to think about, and this is fairly recently, I've seen this out in several avenues, but Die Bold, I think, is the one that has been uh, put pretty good presentation together. There's one more class of uh, CME that's beyond, you know, X uh, rating, and that's a uh, Micronova. And according to our historical record of, you know, fossils and ice core data and stuff, there's something that has happened about every 12,800 years, and it's pretty extreme. And they're thinking that the most likely cause is where the sun Instead of novaing, there's something called a micronova where it just blows off its crust. And unfortunately, you know, the Earth and all the other planets get uh, smacked with just tremendous energy. And, you know, the side that's facing the sun will actually be uh, toasted in such a way that it would be equivalent to trillions of nuclear bombs going off at the same time. And so all this dust and everything gets sent up into the atmosphere and it ends up you know, flash freezing everything on the rest of the earth. Even though it didn't get toasted, it gets flash frozen. And that's why we've seen woolly mammoths with the, you know, cut in its mouth and it just basically froze in place. So that is every 12,800 years approximately. And unfortunately, based on the records, it looks like we're probably eminently due for one of those things. So in the next 30 years or so, somebody's figured out calculating, you know, from the last time this happened to today, we're, uh, we're probably less than 50 years, probably even less than 30 years is what they're estimating, which, you know, that's a, a, a mass extinction type event when that happens. But, uh, you know, I don't know how you could tell that exactly, but that's what they're actually predicting. Now, in the event of uh, nuclear events where, so you have, uh, you know, the lowest level would probably be like a tactical nuclear attack. Um, those are maybe, let's say, a, uh, you know, 10 mile radius, you get, uh, you know, pulverized and vaporized and whatever, but, you know, there's going to be an EMP that goes out from there, you know, so many miles, and that's going to... Uh, potentially fry electronics, but that's not something that's going to affect the whole country. Um, if you went to, um, let's say, the, some of the worst cases, you're 100 or 200 miles above the center of the United States. Now, anything that's directly underneath that is fried, and then it, uh, the distance, they call it dose, determines the poison, right? So the, as you move away from that, the dose becomes less and therefore less effects. So Miami for instance, Florida would be probably not affected, except for the fact that the grid is all <laughs> tied together, and therefore the, uh, you know, they may not have power, but they may not have, you know, all their electronics fried and such. So maybe their generators, everything would work. But uh, um, if you're, say, in uh, the Northeast or or whatever, you, you still are probably within the range where there'd be pretty substantial damage to electronics, electrical grid, that kind of steam power plants, that kind of thing. Uh, in the event of we have thermal nuclear war, you know, you got more problems to worry about than uh, EMP, electromagnetic pulse is what happens with nuclear, because um, you're basically going to have radiation effects and things that you have to be concerned about, and, uh, and also just mass destruction beyond what you can imagine. Everything will be just you know, if you think about uh, uh, what happened in Japan back in uh, the World Wars, uh, we we pretty much just destroyed complete towns, 80,000 people gone at a time, and those were kiloton-type range bombs. When you get into megaton, 
forget about it. And then they even have tsunami type bombs where they would, you know, detonate them off the shoreline and destroy our our infrastructure for shipping and everything else. So there's all kinds of nasty things. But, you know, as far as EMP protection, um, we can't protect against the worst case scenarios like the X-Class or thermonuclear war and stuff like that. You, all you can do is uh, kind of protect against these uh, lower level type issues and basically just, you know, keep the things powered off. If you want to go a little further, you can make some EMI type uh, um, cages. Um, I've seen some simple things where you take, you know, metal trash cans, you know, and then you line it with uh, inside with uh, cardboard, and then you take another smaller trash can inside that, and that's where you put your electronics. And uh, so you have like a double simple Faraday cage, they call it. Um, but, you know, that means you got to have uh, duplicates of about everything that you're using, like your if you have solar, you got to have your solar inverters in there, and you know this this just gets to get to be a little bit carried away. Um, there are some solar inverters now that claim to be um, provide you some level of protection, but again, it's only going to be up to a sub certain level. I used to perform testing for military equipment, and we had uh, we planned or the military decided what they wanted the rating of their equipment to be. And so we would test to make sure the components we used would meet that requirement. But uh, nothing was ever designed for like a direct strike nuclear. It was, you always were planning on something to be, you know, some distance away because, you know, again, direct strike means that the thing is melted, nothing left. And so you're, same thing with us. We can only plan for, you know, medium level stuff and, uh, you have to, in order to plan, you know, you have to have some assumptions. And so you and I and everybody else, unless you have, you know, infinite amount of money and you can get, you know, in a bunker, substantial bunker, so that you can survive both blast, radiation, uh, you know, so the thermal as well as radiation, as well as EMP and everything, uh, that's beyond the capability of most of us to be able to pay for. So. Reality is uh, we can only protect for the lower level stuff and just hope that hope for the best. So anyways, I wanted to just give this a little bit of a talk and uh, so that you're aware because unfortunately there's people thinking that there's nothing you could or you have to put everything in a Faraday cage. Realistically, no, you don't. And realistically, that's a lot of provisioning for your electronics, duplicating everything you got because you want to be able to use it. And we don't know when we're going to be hit and so therefore you can't just think that you're going to get a notification and go throw everything in a Faraday cage that's not going to happen so um, I think you know maybe there's a few things you ought to stick into you know an ESD bag and shield it or use the tr nested trash can uh, Faraday cage something put a few things in there but for the most part we're just going to have to live with whatever happens all right so uh Anyways, I hope uh, this has been helpful for you, and uh, um, let's just hope we don't get hit with the you know, X-Class solar flare anytime soon, and we can live out a very fruitful life, and uh, again, no thermal nuclear war, tell everybody to play nicely, and, and uh, let's just have fun. All right, God bless.